Yo, yo, what's going on? Y'all, your boy Devon Terrell, and welcome to another Help Me Devon tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon tutorial, I'll be showing you guys two steps to get a louder master. Basically, I'm going to show you a technique that is kind of popular called the double limiter trick. At least that's what I've always called it. Now, let me get you an idea of what my master sounds like. Let's check it out. Here it is. I like the girls that could spend a couple dollars on me. She take the check. I like the way that she's styling on me. She getting money. And she pay her rent. She been tripping on it again. I ain't been back in a minute. She don't sit in the passenger. She drives. Okay, so that's one of my own songs, and that is my master. Now, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I got it loud and how I retain some of those dynamics in there uh, at the same time. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use two limiters. A lot of you may be accustomed to, or if you never heard of this, some people like to use a soft clipper and then a limiter as their final stages of their masters sometime. Well, this is not that different from it as opposed to just using a soft clipper and then the limiter after, I'm gonna use a limiter and another limiter. What I'm going to do is, instead of having my final limiter work so hard at the end, I'm gonna split that work for it up amongst two limiters. So I'm gonna make one do a job and the other do the final job. And what that does is gives me a different sound. I've experimented with, I've experimented with this uh, a lot. And as of recently, it's become something that I go to a lot when it comes to my final masses and getting that thing to be really loud. It has a really cool sound with bringing up those nuances uh, and pushing everything to the front and then my final limiter not working so hard and chopping off and destroying so much dynamics um, and, and retaining all of that stuff. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I set it up and then I'll show you some examples ex as well to really show you that this thing really is doing something really special for me personally. Let's do it. Okay, so the limiter or the plugin that I'm gonna use today is gonna be Ozone 10. And basically in Ozone 10, uh, they have a variety of different plugins, of course, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on two of them. One is the vintage limiter, and the other is the maximizer, which is basically their super final limiter that they have built into their system. Now, what I'm gonna do is on this vintage limiter, I'm going to bring down the threshold. So let me take off the maximizer for this, and then let me bring this all the way back up, and then I'm gonna show you how I bring it down. Let's do it. I like the girls that could spend a couple dollars on me. She take the check. I like the way that she's styling on me. She getting money. And she pay her rent. She been tripping on it again. I ain't been back in a minute. She don't sit in the passenger. She drives. She okay, so what I was trying to accomplish was I was looking for it to kiss that limiter. I didn't want it to completely or just do like 3 dB of gain reduction or anything. I really wanted it just to touch those peaks, mainly my kick, because of course that's probably the most transient thing inside my entire mix. What I was trying to do was really just get that volume up, get that level up, get it to push some of that nuance and stuff like that to the front without really chopping off so much of my peaks. So now when I bring it over to the other limiter and push it into that one, it's really gonna say, oh, you're right at the top right there. I'm just gonna make Make sure that I give you even more out of it and split up that work. So if you look at my vintage limiter, you'll see that I have my settings on modern. And the reason why I like why I have my settings on modern is because it has a dope sound to it. Uh, it seems like it has more of a faster attack and release. Um, I'm not too sure exactly the algorithm uh, as far as how it stands with this. But when it comes to the modern side, I noticed that it feels a lot better and it seems to have a better attack and release as far as what I'm looking for from my music. When I go on over to analog, I notice that it has a much slower release. Check this out. I like the girls that could spend a couple dollars on me. So you can see right there as those meters are moving, you can see that that release, it's holding that a little bit longer. And that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm really looking for it to feel a little bit more transient. And that's why I moved on over to modern because I wanted to really let it go. Uh, when you chop, I want you to let it go. So that's basically why I went to modern. Just wanted to give you an idea of why I even did that. Okay, so basically I landed at about four dB and that really gave me a lot more level in my entire song with chopping just a tad. So. Let's take it off and let's listen to before and after. I like the girls that could spend a couple dollars on me. She take the check. I like the way that she's styling on me. She getting money. 
And she pay her rent. She been tripping on it. I ain't been back in a minute. She don't sit in the past. Now, what I'm going to do is, just to give you an idea of what it's truly doing, because I know some of you sticklers out there are saying, well, it's just getting louder. I can't notice it. Well, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use the gain match function inside of Isotope uh, Ozone. And basically, that's going to allow us to really hear what it's truly doing to the sound without you being biased to loudness. Check this out. So I'm going to click on gain match. And it's gonna let us just hear the actual sonic difference, not the volume difference, which tricks you. So, without first, and I'll bypass back and forth. I like the girls that could spend a couple dollars on me. She take the check. I like the way that she's styling on me. She getting money. And she pay her rent. She been tripping on a night. And I ain't been back in a minute. She don't sit in the passenger. She drives. She so what I noticed off the bat is the top end of my mix feels like it gets brighter. I can feel like there's more presence in my vocals and it feels like it just fluffs everything up just a bit, kind of like a soft clipper. And this is going to allow me in the next stage when I put my other limiter on to really just even bring that out even more. So. Step one, I'm using that first limiter to really just give me some level and really just kiss that top of that limiter where it's chopping off the peak just the tad. Not much, not working too hard, but really getting me to that place where when I bring it into the next stage, it won't have to work so hard on that particular limiter. So that is my first step as far as uh, actually getting it louder. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back on, turn off the game match. Now let's move on over to the maximizer. And of course, this is my final limiter, AKA step two, our final step. I'm gonna turn this back on and I want you to see how much gain reduction I'm getting from this limiter. Check this out. I like the girls that could spend a couple dollars on me. She take the check. I like the way that she's styling on me. She getting money. And she pay her rent. She been tripping on a night and I ain't been back in a minute. She don't so I'm getting about 4 dB of gain reduction and I've got this thing pretty loud. Now, I know what you're probably saying to yourself. And 3 to 4 dB is where I like to keep it up. Uh, by all means that can change. That's just something the way I try to be around because I don't want to destroy so much of my dynamics. I know what you're probably thinking to yourself when you say, "Well, why don't I just use one limiter and just crank that down even to the threshold to 7, right?" And wouldn't that accomplish the same sound? I'm going to let you be the judge of this right now. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take off the vintage limiter, right? I'm going to just use the maximizer instead to do all of the work. I'm going to get the uh, maximizer limiter to do 4 dB of gain reduction, just like it's doing now. And then let's listen to the difference between the double limiter effect and the single limiter effect doing the same amount of gain reduction uh, as far as chopping those peaks and stuff like that. Check this out. Okay, so first, let's do it without the vintage limiter. So without the vintage limiter, and I've already did an experiment and found where 4 dB of gain reduction gives me, at a, when I bring this limiter back down to about 5.5, it gives me about 4 dB of gain reduction. So, took off the vintage limiter, now listen to this with just the single limiter, same amount of gain reduction. I like the girls that could spend a couple dollars on me. She take the check. I like the way that she's styling on me. She getting money. And she pay her rent. She been tripping on a night. And I ain't been back in a minute. She don't sit in the passenger. She now, with the vintage limiter. I like the girls that could spend a couple dollars on me. She take the check. I like the way that she's styling on me. She getting money. And she pay her rent. She Huge difference, yet I'm getting the same amount of gain reduction on my final limiter. Even before, you notice that my gain reduction even went to about 4.6 dB as far as chopping those peaks, giving me even more gain reduction. I am a big fan of using the double limiter trick, and the reason is because it helps to really bring up and bring out the level and the nuances that I'm really looking to push forward in the mix, chopping some of those peaks, peaks and then spreading up that work uh, to my other limiter so it doesn't have to work so hard to give me that loudness. I'm a big fan of this. If you use soft clipping and then the limiter, it is a very similar effect. I know a lot of people that do that. I love 
doing the double limiter trick or the soft clip trick. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does work, but this is just a quick way for you to just uh, try something different and see what that sound feels like. That, that vintage limiter really helped to fill up the mix and just made it feel a lot more beefy uh, in the entire master. So I hope that th uh, that was enjoyable. That was my tutorial on two quick steps to give you a louder master. I really hope you enjoyed that. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram and make sure you follow us on our Discord community with a bunch of aspiring engineers like yourself, trading secrets and giving game. I'll leave a link in the description below for that. And also please make sure you check out the My Audio Nerds podcast every single Wednesday with audio nerds just like yourself, uh, just talking about the things we love. So I hope that that was helpful. And until next time, you guys.